In this video, we're going to be taking a look at using Maya and the Maya toolbox to resurface our model that we have. So the first thing we need to do is go to ZBrush and determine what exactly it is that we want to resurface. So I've got this bust character and I've got some metallic pieces on his head and also here on his chest area that I don't want to resurface because I want to keep everything together that I'm going to consider skin. I also don't want to resurface the base of this so I'm gonna start thinking about turning off certain objects that I don't want to include in this resurface process. I'm gonna go to the subtool section and then I'm going to turn off anything that I don't think needs to be resurfaced. I'm gonna click on this first piece the head and then I'm gonna hold down shift and click on the eye icon and it turns everything off except for whatever we see that's visible here. So I've got the head and I want to use that. I'm going to turn on the visibility for the body. I'm going to turn on the visibility for the eyes, which are just actually the soft part that goes around the eye, the eyelids themselves. Um, I'm going to leave this tongue piece off, this technical kind of spine that I have on the back. I'm going to leave that off as well. I'll turn on these extras real quick and take a look at those. Um, so they're not really breaking the silhouette all that much. So I could include those. They do change the silhouette a little bit right in through here and a little bit here. So I will include those uh, as well. And I'm not going to take these pieces that was kind of like this gear for the uh, top of his head or this piece for his chest. And I don't want these things over here as well. So in uh, one of the earlier videos, we looked at how we can merge down pieces so if we were with the head we could merge down the head and the body together and uh, we could keep selecting certain objects we could push them up or down in this stack with these two buttons so we could rearrange them in a way that we could merge them down if we wanted to do it that way the other thing we could do is do this merge visible and that's only going to merge the pieces that are visible in here and it actually doesn't throw it in the subtool anywhere it actually merges all these pieces together and it makes a whole new object and puts it up in here somewhere. Now I would hit that button and show you this process, but uh, I know from looking at this model the poly count is so high that I run out of memory on, this, on my system and uh, it can cause ZBrush to crash. So I need to uh, do some things to kind of help out with that process. So what I can do is go to the uh, plugins and go to decimation master and open that up right here so we did look at an earlier video how to run this whenever we were taking a look at insert mesh brushes and reducing the poly count on those so this is a great tool for taking poly counts and reducing them so if I'm going to take these models and push them outside of ZBrush and use them for uh, resurfacing or more importantly taking the models and pushing them out so I can bake off normal maps I'm probably going to want to reduce the poly count on them anyways. So what I can do is go to Decimation Master. If I have UVs, I can click on the Keep UVs, but I don't, so I'm not too worried about that. And if there's anything like an open border that you're really concerned about holding that exact shape, you could turn on Freeze Borders as well. So I don't have to worry about either one of those scenarios. What I can do is uh, click the Pre-Process All. So if we do that, that's going to analyze all the different meshes that you see here as subtools and go through and do a calculation that will allow us to start decimating or dropping the poly count after that's done. So we could do that on a per subtool basis with the pre-process current, or we can do the pre-process all. And I'm going to use this button here. I'm going to run this and then pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, it took a little bit of time, but ZBrush finished up this task of pre-processing all the different pieces that I have shown and visible. So I'm going to turn on Solo just so we can kind of isolate what we're looking at here. I'm going to turn on the poly frame so we can look at this uh, resolution as it drops down. So I can take this uh, percent of decimation. So if I had it 100%, there's going to be no change. If I drop it down to 90, it's going to reduce 10% of the overall polys. I want to get that number down to at least something about 15% or so. And I can say decimate all, and that's going to do all the different objects that we shown and were visible, like that. Or we could just do decimate current, which I think I want to be a little more specific about what I'm doing. So I'm going to use the decimate current. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click that uh, button and it's going to go through its process. And you can see uh, it's going to decimate that model. And this is the new poly count that we've got here. So we can hover our cursor over the model and check that and see where we're at. So it's under a million polys right now just for the head alone. And I think that's a pretty good number, uh, something that I can use. And if I bake off stuff, I might bake off this piece with another piece or something like that. So I think that's going to be all right. Uh, I'm going to take that and export that out so I have uh, an HD version of this thing. So I'm going to go back. I've got a folder structure set up, and I'll just do head. And I usually designate that this is uh, decimated. And I'll put HI for the high res version of that, and I'll save that out. So in the uh, earlier videos we looked at, we can just hit the down arrow key, and that's going to actually step us down in our uh, subtools here, or we can just click here, either one. Um, and let's turn on the polyframe for this and take a look. And we're currently at uh, about uh, 1.2 million polys for that. So let's try, let's try. 12% decimation for this. So I'm going to say decimate current and I'll go through and we should see this change in the model at that point. And here's the results for that. And I'm going to turn off the polyframe. So I don't really notice any kind of drop in quality level just looking at the model shaded like this. But let's hover our cursor over here and see where we're at. So we are still at uh, 3 million polys it looks like. So I'm going to drop that down even further. We're going to see how far we can go down with this. I'm going to try like 5% and hit decimate current. So I must have read those numbers wrong for how many polys it was. If I thought that was 1.2 million that must have been uh, like 12 million or something like that. So let's take a look here now at the poly frame. So we've reduced this thing down and I don't really notice any kind of quality difference. You'll have to kind of zoom in pretty close and then you can start to see the amount of decimation that's kind of going on. So it doesn't look uh, too bad, anything that's alarming to me. Let's hover our cursor over this and see the poly count. Yeah, so we're, we're within range here. So we're a little over um, a million polys for this. So I'll go ahead and kick this out, export it, and I've already got my uh, folder structure set up. So I've already got this naming convention. I'll just call this uh, body. I'll replace the head here like that, uh, just to be consistent. I'll upper, make that uppercase. OK, so I'm going to go through the rest of these pieces real quick and uh, put the video in time lapse mode to do that. All right, there was a section in that time lapse video that I was getting tripped up and I couldn't get it to uh, decimate. And that's because I had a part of my model was actually hidden and it won't decimate whenever that was hidden. So I had to uh, take that piece of geometry and delete it out. I actually had some different geometry in this part of the head at one point. So uh, just note that if you run into some kind of issue and it won't decimate, it, it, it did throw an error message up for me, but it did it so quickly. I didn't have time to read it, but uh, that's what it was telling me is that I had part of my model hidden. So if you run into that, uh, you might um, just want to take a look at that and make sure you don't have any part of your model hidden. Okay, so now that we've got everything kind of decimated down and we've exported these pieces out, we've got a nice uh, high-res version of all these different sections. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually use that merge all visible within the subtool area. So like I was saying before, the poly count was so high um, whenever I tried to do it the last time, it actually caused my computer to run out of memory. So now that it's been decimated, uh, I should be able to run this process. So I'm going to say merge visible, like this. And it looks like it went through pretty quick and did that for us. So here's the new version, and it says merged head, because head's the top uh, subtool here. So if we click on that, we can go over here, and I believe if we turn on polyframe, it should have all of our uh, uh, polygroups still visible for this. And that could be handy. 
So we do have this representation of our model. If we hover our cursor over it, it is 3 million polys. So that's still pretty high. If I'm going to kick this on over to Maya to do resurfacing, I don't want a model that is uh, 3 million, obviously. I think I need to get it down to probably about uh, half a million or uh, uh, definitely lower than half a million. So I'm going to try to do that. We're going to use the uh, Z plugin again, dock it over here, and we're going to use Decimation Master. And on this model, we're going to say preprocess current because we only have one model. And it's going to go through and analyze the mesh. Okay, now that's done. We'll go ahead and use the percent of decimation. Let's just go put it on 10% and say decimate current. Now if this gets a little rough, it's not a big deal because we're just using this for uh, resurfacing process uh, purposes. But if you look at it, it still doesn't look too bad as we get uh, back away from it. But as we get closer, we can start to see you know, the polys starting to show up on there and stuff. So the uh, poly count is starting to become quite visible for us. Now I'm going to hover my cursor over here and we're at uh, 305,000 around there. Um, I'm not sure we'll have to check when we go into Maya with this but that number might get uh, doubled because we're showing in ZBrush quads and not polys so uh, if you take a quad and you divide it in half you have uh, polys at that point which could drive up that count when we get into Maya. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to drop it down a little bit lower. I'm going to put it on like 7%, say decimate current. And uh, let's take a look at the number now. So we're at 214. So I think that should be pretty good. So we're going to export this out. And we're going to just say merged all. And I'm going to call this decimated. Like this. And then now we've got an OBJ that we're going to pull into Maya. So let's hop on over to Maya. So here we are inside of Maya, and I'm going to go ahead and import in that OBJ that we exported out. So I'm going to say File, Import, Option Box, and go to OBJ. And I'm going to make sure that this is set to single object. Uh, if it's set to multiple objects, it can bust your model up into multiple pieces. It's always important to have this on. It doesn't matter with the decimation stuff, but uh, if you're doing anything with blend shapes, that's really important to make sure that this is on single object. So I would go take my settings and put it on the single object and then go here and say save settings so that always loads up that way every time so I'm gonna to go to import and then I have to navigate to where that um, model is so I'm gonna go down here and go into the folder and go into my tools and resources and here is this model I'm gonna import that in let it go through. I'm going to tap F to zoom in on the model. Hit 5 to show in shaded mode. And that looks pretty darn cool even in uh, Maya. If we zoom in really close, you can see that uh, this model has hard edges. So if you want to get rid of this hard edge look, you can select the model and you can go make sure you're in the polygon menu set here. We're going to go to normals and say soften edge like this. I'm going to select the model, make sure I'm in object mode, so I'm tapping F8 to switch between that, or you can right click on here and go to object mode. And we've got this history on here. I'm going to hit um, Alt-Shift-D to get rid of the history on this model. So we're getting close to having this set up. So I would save this right off the bat just to make sure everything's nice and, you know, if anything happens, we don't have to go through that process again. So I'm going to go File, Save As, just do a Maya binary, and then I'm going to have to navigate again to where I was storing this. We've got Maya, and then I'll just call this uh, Resurface Bust, give it a number value, save that. Okay, so we're good with that. So now I'm going to take my model, I'm going to go ahead and select that, and I'm going to turn on this Make Live Surface button. So what this allows Maya to do is take any piece of geometry and it makes the surface live to where you can drag tools on it. If you make new geometry, it creates it on the surface of that. Um, so this version of Maya is 2014, I believe it's like Service Pack 1. 
uh, and there's been some updates to it so this is the current way of doing this uh, in Maya 2014 but if you have an earlier version you're gonna have to go to modify and then say make live to make that surface live so this works differently with Maya's toolkit as well so I'm gonna make the surface live what you see here and go to the new uh, Maya modeling toolkit and I'm gonna use the quad draw uh, normally you would have to update this and you would put the piece of geometry in this uh, transform constraints within here so there would be a drop down list and you could actually uh, select the uh, piece of geometry that you want this quad draw to stick to but with this new setup you just make the surface live and then you're ready to go over here so I'm gonna go ahead and you can just click a point 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 and you got a quad if you got a quad you can hold down shift and it automatically detects that and if you want to make that into poly you just click and it turns that into a new point the other thing you can do you can hold down shift and you can see if you drag left or right on this it's going to add a new edge loop right in the middle here and if we go to this edge here we can drag this up and down so it's again the same process as what we did before with creating the poly we just click and it's going to add it for us if you want to move these individual little points around you can hold down the middle mouse and click and drag so you can push these points up like this so we got this here and you can also you can just see if you just have your cursor over the top of it you can use relax which will actually paint and relax those points on the surface and it's always continually sticking to the surface of the model so it makes it really nice for um, resurfacing so I'm just gonna go click another point here and another point here draw this quad and middle mouse move this to the uh, the center at that point okay so the other thing is I'd want to uh, make geometry when I make it on the left I want it to pop up on the right side of the character as well so I'm just gonna go out of this uh, tool real quick and use the pick tool I'm gonna go to the outliner window outliner and then I'm gonna select this new surface that's being made and I'm gonna duplicate it across the x axis so you can see this here is the x axis and I'm gonna give it a negative scale so it pushes this copy over here but I'm gonna make an, an instance so whatever I do on this side is going to update automatically on this other side as well so I'm gonna go edit duplicate special with the option box and then we're gonna take a look here I'm gonna create an instance for geometry type give it a negative scale on X because this is X Y and Z so I'll go ahead and say duplicate uh, make sure I have my objects selected hit apply and you can see if I tap forward to see through the model we've got these two different copies of this so I might want to take this piece uh, here tap F9 to have my um, my verts shown put on W for move and I can move that around like that but if I want to snap to the center I can hold down X and you can see how it's going to temporarily turn on grid snapping and I'll just snap those points to the middle by holding down X and clicking on this axis manipulator right here so everything's nice and uh, even and snapped together at that point alright now that we have our mirroring of our instance set up let's go ahead and move forward with uh, doing the resurfacing process so I'm going to just go in the outliner we can select this object here and I'm gonna tap 5 to make sure we're back in this shaded mode so it's important when you go back into the quad draw that you actually have the surface selected that you want to uh, continue on with the resurfacing process. So I'm going to hit quad draw and you can see that surface turns black and we're in this mode where we're ready to uh, go and keep resurfacing on here. So it's going to keep adding these points along here. Hold down shift and I can add those new sections of geo the middle mouse drag to uh, move the points so there's not much more I can really tell you about uh, the technical things for resurfacing but we could talk a little bit about just the thinking um, that goes into this resurfacing process so um, the way that I like to do things I like to try to um, make things as simple as possible uh, shape wise and then add more complexity so you see there's a nice big row of polys through here uh, so I can just lay down those points pretty quickly but then as I need to build up 
a little more geo in this area because it's pretty flat then we can just hold down shift we can add a new section and the cool thing about this whole resurfacing process inside of Maya is that you saw that it added that split and it resnapped all those points to the surface for us automatically so it's a uh, it's a pretty nice system um, and this relax brush is really pretty nice as well so if you get you can see uh, this uh, point here was really close to this one over here and a lot of space here so I can just keep tapping on that for the relax and it's going to try to even out the spacing of this geo so if you uh, use these tools correctly you should end up with some really nice evenly spaced topology um, that represents the shape that you're going for for the uh, for the model so you might have to run the relax and then kind of tweak this a little bit after the fact so one more thing I can talk to you about that this the way we're um, looking at the model and the way it's creating this geo on the surface it isn't too bad but um, there is something that I like to do where I add a uh, a shader to this model that we're looking at right here and I give it some transparency so then that way we can kind of see through the model just a little bit and that's pretty easy to do so I'm just going to go up to window and I'm gonna go to rendering editors and go to the hypershade and then this is gonna give us this whole area that we can look at where we can build shaders inside of Maya so um, we can just use a blend so you just create a blend uh, shader you can double click on it if you want to give it a name um, so I'll just call this uh, resurface blend like that and what I'll do is let me move this down so we can see what's going on here I'll click the mesh that we're using to resurface we can right click over the shader and just say assign material to selection and you can see it changed in the background um, back there like that you can see the highlights on there so you know that's assigned to that now we can double click on the shader and then in the timeline I'm gonna rearrange these windows so we can see some of these different elements in the time slider here uh, you can see if we middle mouse drag we can drag that to the first uh, key of the time slider right there and we can go to the transparency and we can right click on that and say set key so that'll give us a keyframe on frame one of 100% uh, opacity. If we middle mouse drag all the way to the end of our time slider, which is 24, it might be a different number for you, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, we can take the transparency and drag it all the way up to make it 100% transparent in the uh, viewport there. So after we have that, we can just right click on here and say set key. And if I minimize these windows, you can take a look now and you can see you can use the uh, time slider as a way to uh, look and get uh, look through the model and see some transparency about it so that might help you uh, when you're resurfacing this thing the other thing is when it's when you start to draw transparent like this uh, you might not want to see the back side of this so you can go to the object for this select it and then hit control A to bring up the attribute editor and we'll go to object display uh, and then we'll go to uh, we will go to mesh component display and then we'll say this back face calling is set to off we'll put that to full and you saw a change back here whenever we did that now whenever we um, switch off the model you can see it doesn't draw quite as much as the uh, of the back faces on there so you can see through the model a little bit better at that point and if we drag this down even further uh, in the viewport you can see we've got some weird kind of things going on with the polygons here for the display I am set in viewport 2.0 if we go to the option box for that there are some different methods for doing uh, transparency so we could put it on simple and try that we could try these different methods and just see what happens object sorting I believe that's what it was on we do weighted average and depth peeling um, and it looks like this weighted 
average looks pretty good the depth peeling this transparency quality uh, changes as well so maybe we could take a look at that uh, I think I like this weighted average the most out of those so um, I think there's different performance issues with uh, using these different methods but it seems to be working okay on my machine but those things might help you just a little bit whenever you're doing the resurfacing part and trying to uh, trying to see for the most part I think this is going to be okay if you're fully opaque but um, you might need to uh, pump up this transparency just a little bit to to uh, see this a little better the other thing is the way we set keys um, you could also set keys for the uh, the specularity so you could turn off specularity whenever it's completely transparent and that might give you a little bit of a different visual effect for that um, so here we are we're back to this mode and again this is only if it gets a little confusing uh, to kind of tell what it is that you're you're working with the other thing we could do is open up the attribute editor for the uh, piece that we're working on and we could actually go to object display and go to the drawing overrides enable overrides and we could turn off shading for these pieces here so basically now at this point you're only gonna see uh, that geometry sitting over the top of that model and you're not seeing the polygons being shaded on it so these things help a little bit uh, they're not necessary but uh, if you find yourself being a little confused about what it is that you're looking at those options might help you okay so we've talked about just you know these general things how to get there some other things that we could talk about with uh, resurfacing is kind of zooming in here on the eye and looking at shape that would be necessary for an eye okay so I'm gonna draw these points around here and basically I'm trying to give a uh, a flow for geometry that will end up being circular so it's gonna be going around the eye in a circle and I'll show you in just a second why that's kind of important so keep drawing these points out like this okay so now we've got uh, something that's circular on the eye we could click and drag these points out and push them even further out along where the uh, the eye sits I might be having a little trouble moving over this ridge so we'll get this here and then once we have these spread out with a good distance we're going to be able to add uh, divisions along the eye because we set it up in a in a loop to where basically now if we hold down shift we can add a new section here maybe a new section right in there and some of these points you might have to relax this a little bit just because it's uh, at least for my model I've got uh, some pretty extreme eyelids on this creature so I might have to move those around just a little bit push those up you can usually kind of tell where it's sitting on the surface by just moving the points around and moving your vantage point a bit. Just try to get this in here. So why we wanted to set it up this way is to be able to add this geo in this this manner but then also if we go to animate this eye it's going to have enough geometry in there to where uh, you could put bones on there and uh, close this close this surface up and it would behave like you uh, you would expect so it looks like I might have um, drawn these points together which I don't really want I might have to switch out of the tool real quick and just select the surface and go to faces and uh, then at that point 
you can use all of Maya's normal tools for uh, getting rid of certain sections. So I don't need this piece of geometry there. I actually wanted a point right here. So I'm going to hit F8 and uh, go back, tap 5 to view shaded on our model. And once this is selected, we can go back to quad draw and we're back in this mode. So now I can just add one point and I should be able to add that piece there and there. And that that's what I was looking for. Um, I must have missed a little point earlier uh, in the video. So that's pretty easy to fix. So it it is a little odd right now. I think this is going to change in future versions of this tool, but it's kind of known that it is a little difficult to get out of this tool and go back to the normal method of working in Maya and then switch back. So that's kind of the only drawback of um, using this tool, and it's not really that big of a drawback. It's just you got to get used to uh, kind of switching out of this tool and getting back into Maya's normal tools. Sometimes you have to close down this entire toolbox altogether and put it back on the channel box over here. So it's just just some things to kind of look out for. So I've got uh, one more row here that I'm going to add holding down shift and then click right around in this area and you can see we still have some work to do. So again this is I've got this pretty extreme divot in here um, and I think that's why it's having a little bit of trouble snapping in certain spots which is it's not that big of a deal it's just we have to kind of clean up some things here and there and you know through this process you get to be uh, very spe specific about where you're gonna lay out these points like this I'll relax that a little bit so I, I would say they've done a really nice job of getting you um, the tools that you really need to uh, to build this out like this and it does help speed up the whole resurfacing process so this is uh, at least for me it's one of those tasks that eh, it's somewhat interesting I mean I do like topology and I like uh, thinking about laying things out it can become a kind of a puzzle trying to figure out how to fit everything together especially if you want to keep everything quads which I like to keep my model in quads as much as possible uh, it is possible to do the you know do these uh, tries like that and it's not a horrible thing uh, it's just I like the reason I like quads is it allows me to uh, go into programs like ZBrush and then sculpt and get nice results whenever I go and I subdivide the model and you might you see that in this section I want to do a quad here so you got to kind of move your cursor around to get uh, to the right spot and it looks like it didn't join this for me here so I'll try to get rid of uh, this point so I'm gonna have to hop back back on over to this mode there are selection modes in here so I can go to the selection mode and then click this so I'm not actually going out of the toolbox like I was saying the way it's kinda set up it can be difficult to hop back and forth uh, so if I go to quad draw it will get me back in that section but uh, sometimes I just notice you gotta maybe select that surface to go back so just keep an eye out uh, for your models to make sure that it is creating the geometry in the way that you are expecting so you can see on this I was able to take this uh, circular pattern pattern and now I'm kind of changing and I'm breaking it so uh, like if I do a loop now you see how that loop will not go all, all the way around um, it is possible if I uh, selected this and deleted it and maybe delete this part and go back into the quad draw we could do this I was just a little concerned about having such a large polygon coming out of here and then we've got to add some kind of detail going on there um, so that that's kind of why I broke things right there and you'll you'll have to just kind of get used to uh, figuring out how you're gonna have to lay out the topology for what you want to do so you can see like I was saying I want to add some more geometry coming right in through here and I want to start following this shape coming up draw another point there like this 
and then I will add a point point go there like that and then move this up and it's just it's just a uh, continual process of trying to evaluate the model and try to figure out how to best represent that topology and usually you want to do it with as few uh, points as possible and then if you want to keep adding a little more geo later to that that's good like that um so now that I got this shape done it, I could switch on over to uh, the model and go out of this tool and create the inner part of the eye so I could go out of this like I was saying I will go out of this tool altogether and let's take a look at hiding this real quick I'll just hit uh, control H to hide that model and if we need to bring back our shading for this you remember we hid that before so we'll hit control A you could set up some kind of a uh, little script or something like that to turn this stuff on and off if you wanted to view the shading I also like to just go to normals and say harden edge so I can kind of get a really good idea of exactly what it is that I'm looking at as far as the geometry that I'm creating and so then now we've got this eyelid and I can hit F10 to go to my edge mode or right click on there and say edge and then just double click on that and that's going to give me all my edges hold down shift and right click and you say extrude edge we can do uh, offset I was trying to do this local mode here so if I hold down control it gives me a li it can give me better control over those numbers or we could just type something in that looks okay point zero zero five let's try that and then I can uh, just push this in just a little bit and then move it this way and I'm building some shape up for that actual thickness of that eyelid and depending on how thick you want it you might have to push that back just a little bit further like this and hit uh, G for my last command so this is moving in local mode which can if you're careful you could push it in this way but you can get some odd results if you're not not careful about that so if you see anything wonky going like that if you click this this is going to put you in a world transform mode which is going to go along the uh, little axis indicator down here that you see on uh, X Y and Z and so I'll do hit G for my last command and do one uh, last piece and I'll convert these all to uh, verts because I'm going to merge them all to the center and so if you want to convert from a selection if you hit uh, uh, F9 is verts, F10 is edges, F11 is faces if you add control with that you can switch from like edges to verts so I'm going to hold on control and hit F9 and it's going to convert all my edges to verts like that and then now I can go hold down shift right click and say merge vertices and say merge to center and so now I'm starting to build out some piece that would be like the uh, the eye pocket for this and if I uh, grow my selection hit shift and then the uh, arrow key that is basically it's the same one as the period key that'll grow the selection out from that one vert to these next set of verts and I can pull that in just a little bit another tool that we can use to relax these vertices is up here under mesh and we can say average vertices and there's options for that how strong it's going to be we can just put that down to one and hit apply and you can see it's going to uh, smooth out those those uh, verts with inside of there kind of smooth that out so I can hit uh, F8 to go back into object mode I'm going to delete history because you can see that's going to probably start building up over here Alt Shift D is the hotkey for uh, deleting history. There we go. To get rid of that, and I can go back here and say Normals and Harden Edge, and this is what we've got for our Geo so far. So this is uh this does take a little while. Uh, it it would be a lot faster. I'm obviously sitting here trying to uh, explain the process to you, and so. 
when you just kind of get into the groove, uh, things will definitely speed up for you quite a bit. 